Welcome to Motion Time. Today I'm gonna show you how to make this. in Apple Motion. So let's start my project settings. I have already prepared my image. I have my background and my subject. I have used Pixelmator Pro to separate the subject from the background. You can use any auto editing app to do the same. So let's start. First, let's adjust the scale of our image. Now that we have this, let's create our text. I have my text here now, alignment center, and then the position to default 00. zero. The next thing you need to do, if you have seen my previous tutorial, the circle text, we will do the same here. So the next thing you need to do is go to layout, go to layout method to path, and change the path shape to circle. Then let's adjust the radius. Maybe like this. Let's see. One, two. Okay, this one. Then increase the font size. Then for the rotation, let's set this to 90 degree. And then go to properties. Set the rotation of X to negative 90. If we adjust the Y rotation, you will notice that our text is in the opposite. So let's go back to our text, go to layout and check inside path. Now when we rotate this Y position, you will see that the text is already facing correctly. Let's reset the Y position. Now that we have this, let's put it in a group, command shift N. Then let's rename this as main text source. Now that we have this, let's add a camera. So add object, camera, then switch to 3D. Now that everything is set, Let's add a new viewport. Go to the right side and click this one so that we have a another or second viewport. Then this second viewport, let's set it to top. Select our text, go to properties, then select our text itself, not the group. So select our text and then adjust the position so that this text is in the center of the main text source. After that, let's turn off the text for a while. Then let's go to our image. On our image, select our background and then adjust the Z rotation around 1000 minus 1000 in the C space. And then let's increase the scale. Then on our second viewport, let's change this top to perspective. So in here, we can see that we have a separation now between our background and subject. Next, let's turn on our main text source. Then we will have this. Let's add a rotation on our Y so that it will rotate like this. So let's reset that. Select your main text source, then go to behavior, basic motion, and spin. Change the axis from Z to Y. And then for the spin rate, it depends on you how fast or how slow. So I'm going to set it to negative 15. Okay, it looks correct for my opinion. Then this main text source, let's add it to a new group. Command Shift N. And then put that main text source into that new group. And let's rename it as MTF. Okay, let's adjust the X rotation to negative 10. No, uh, positive 10. Okay, maybe more. Okay. The next thing we need to do is let's adjust again our background because as you can see here on our preview or the perspective viewport, our text is being cut off by our background. So let's adjust our background a bit more and then adjust the scale. Then go to our MTF group and then adjust the X rotation. If we press spacebar, you will see here on our perspective that it works correctly. Next thing we need to do is duplicate this text. So command D and let's rename it as subtext. 
one. Then let's change the text on this group. After doing that, let's change the font style to regular and also the font size. After that, let's adjust the Y position. Let's put it on the top. Now let's go back to our active camera viewport and press play. So we have this now. Almost finished guys. Then let's change the spin of this one. So go to behaviors. And then change the spin rate to around maybe positive 15. So that it will rotate the other way around. The next thing we need to do is duplicate this again. Then let's rename this as subtext2. Then go to the text itself and change the Y position to put it down on our main text. So let's go back to our first frame and press play or press spacebar. Okay, so it works correctly. Let's add some effects on our MTF group, our main text group so select your empty app group and then go to filters glow and glow okay so you notice that it didn't work correctly after we apply the glow the text all the text itself went in front of the subject so this is something like i want to show you if you will use glow on your text so let's delete that so let's put this empty app group to another group so command shift n let put it inside that group. Then once inside, let's duplicate this empty app group. And this empty app copy, put it below the empty app group. Let's add a blur filter here. So go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And increase the amount. Let's say 120. You will notice that it also did the same thing as earlier. So in order to solve this, let's select our group that contains the empty app and the empty app copy and put it below the subject. Now it has solved that issue. Let's go to our first frame and press spacebar on your keyboard. Now let's rename this group one as the empty app app. Either way, uh, any naming will do. So let's go to our empty app copy. To the Gaussian blur, then let's add some randomize filter here so let's click add parameter behavior randomize then change to add a subtract and then reduce the frequency or and also reduce the noise and let's take a look okay it's a very subtle glow effect okay so we're almost done now let's do or let's work on our camera so select your camera so angle of view, this is the lens itself. So currently we're at 45 degree or 45 mm. Let's use a 35 mm for this one. If we change the angle of view to 35, you will notice that there's some black space behind our subject. So to solve this, let's just go to our image and then go to properties of our subject and increase the Z position. Let's go back again to our camera and then go to depth of field. Once you select this depth of field and increase the DOF blur amount, nothing will happen because our depth of field render is not checked yet. So check this one and then instantly you will see the result of the blur with the depth of field. Okay, the next thing we need to do is add some focus offset and near focus. Let's adjust the near focus first. Then let's add some randomized parameter here on the focus offset. Let's reduce the frequency and also the noisiness. Let's look at our preview. Okay, so we cannot see that much, right? So let's turn off our other viewport and let's do some RAM preview first. So what do you think, guys? Not that much yet, right? So let's go to our camera and maybe we can tweak a bit more the randomized filter later. So next thing, let's add some sweep on our camera. So select your camera, go to behaviors, camera, and sweep. So change the speed to is both. 
and the end to one let's go to the last frame okay i think it's good let's duplicate this sweep change the axis to tilt x and duplicate again change the axis to roll z then let's add some dolly with our on our camera so go to behaviors camera dolly then change the speed to is both again and let's add a wriggle effect on our distance so click this add parameter behavior wriggle then reduce the amount the frequency and noisiness okay i think it works in a nice way so let's save let's save that so next thing we need to do let's add some bit of the icing on the cake go to our image on our subject which is this one go to library go to filters go to glow and then let's add a glint filter as you can see the glint filter already added some cool effect on our subject especially on the goggles or the VR headset so let's adjust the exposure a bit okay then adjust the glint softness also to taper it down and the glow amount okay guys so doing this actually will make your system a bit slow so be careful let's save that again then let's add some particles on our composition so let's create a small circle okay this one will work let's go to properties and reset then go to library, particle emitters, nature, and go to snow. Apply. So select your parameter or select your particle emitter. Go to emitter. Change the start point to zero and end point to zero. Change the shape to point. Set to 3D. And then here on the particle source, put the circle in there. Let's turn off our circle. So let's scroll through our composition. Okay, so... You can see that we have these particles already next thing we need to do is set the position of our snow so let's put it here on the left corner and then let's adjust the speed and let's change the emission latitude like 15 to 73 and emission range around maybe 173.7 okay let's scroll through our timeline okay so it doesn't go that far right let's play around with the parameters here so you get the point you just play around here on the particle emitters so be careful when using the particles emitter it will slow down your system let's increase the circle the main source okay i think this one is a bit okay now for me so just play around with the particle emitters so i think we're done already for this tutorial maybe let's adjust the rotation of our text let's say let's say 30 maybe negative 30 for the subtext and also the main text too much okay so that's how to make this style in apple motion i hope you learned a lot from this tutorial and maybe you can apply this on your projects very soon if you like this tutorial please hit that subscribe button and like thank you and see you again